let me just, uh, let me just, um, yep, there we go. Remember when Ratchet and Clank got a movie? Yeah, no, me neither. So back in 2016, Sony had a groundbreaking idea. What if we set up our own studio exclusively for films by PlayStation characters? A studio that specializes in making video game movies? How could that possibly feel? I mean, they have such an amazing track record. But the question is, what franchise would be used to start off this Sony cinematic universe? Well, Ratchet and Clank, of course. It's actually the only good idea they've had in this whole situation. Our first feature film. And there's nothing here. Where's the dubstep? Apologies, Captain. Everyone is out making the Ratchet and Clank movie. So yeah, in 2016, Sony wanted to start regularly releasing video game movies about their iconic characters like Sly Cooper, Nathan Drake. Yeah, okay, if PlayStation All-Stars Battle Royale has taught us anything, it's that Sony do not have many iconic mascots. Okay, everyone. Break is over. Sadly, though, despite thinking this could be a lucrative endeavor to widen the public awareness of these characters, the Ratchet and Clank movie failed to satisfy really anybody, and only managed to break about half its budget at the box office. Could the movie really be that bad? Before we get into that, let's take a slight detour and look into a short history of Ratchet and Clank to see if it at least succeeded at being a fateful adaptation. Ratchet and Clank is a third-person shooter and open-world platformer created by Insomniac Games. Ever since 2002, the series has been widely popular, getting at least one game almost every year. They follow Ratchet, the last of his species known as the Lombax. Maybe. He works as a mechanic. You know, because he's got a giant wrench. One day he runs into Clank, a small robot defect who initially butts heads with Ratchet, but over the course of the game learn that their differences only bring them closer together, and from then on are the best of friends, planet hopping in their spaceship to defeat whatever bad guy threatens the galaxy. As the games became more and more successful, and Insomniac developed the characters and gameplay more, they had wanted to start making the games play like an animated movie. So at that point, the next best thing to do would just be to make a movie. So in 2016, we got just that, alongside a PlayStation 4 remake of the original game. Now, I was really excited for the remake. I got it day one and fell in love with it. I know for hardcore Ratchet and Clank fans, it's considered a huge step down from previous entries, especially as a remake to the original. But it was my first Ratchet game and I just did not care at all. I just think it's neat. Despite this though, I never bothered watching the movie. The most I saw from it was that Sony sponsored Smosh to make a video dedicated to promoting it. Ah, <sighs> poppycock. On April 29th, two unlikely heroes will need courage. I'm going in. Power and friendship. Ratchet and Clank, rated PG. Robots are so cool. Yeah, that definitely doesn't come off as desperate, Sony. Who are you gonna get to promote the Sly Cooper movie? Because my DMs are open, Sony. I'll do anything. Anyway, enough of that. Let's look into 2016's Ratchet and Clank, the movie. This film takes a slightly different approach on our hero's origin story. Ratchet is a mechanic, fixing up spaceships on a dull desert planet. Despite having a pretty good life of his caring parental figure Grimroth, Ratchet longs for more in life, looking for action and adventure, and a story that isn't a complete Star Wars knockoff. Like, come on, desert planet not knowing his real parents, longing for more in life. I'm not the only one who sees this, right? Anyways, Ratchet's dream is to join the Galactic Rangers, a group of planet-protecting heroes led by an egotistical airhead, Captain Quark. Meanwhile, on a distant planet, the evil Chairman Drek and his partner Dr. Nefarious are using his giant space station the Deplanetizer to destroy other planets. Again, am I the only one who sees the Star Wars connection here? While producing his army of warbots, a lightning blackout causes their system to produce a small little defect. After learning of Drek's plans, he escapes to warn the Rangers, but ends up landing nearby Ratchet instead. So, what do I call you? I suppose my proper designation is Warbot Defect B5429. <sighs> Maybe I'll just call you Clank. <laughs> oh, that sure wasn't forced at all. So after meeting up and immediately becoming best friends, Ratchet and Clank head out to warn the Galactic Rangers and hopefully join them in the process. After proving themselves as competent fighters, Ratchet slowly starts to become the face of their team, causing Quark to become jealous and eventually betray them all by teaming up with Drek. However, it is futile in the end, as Ratchet and Clank beat him with the power of funny XD random sheep, and also defeat Drek's partner Dr. Nefarious, who does like a, a dumb betrayal in the end, except, you know, it's very f obvious to see this set it up in a previous- This story sucks. It's such a simple point A to point B kind of thing. There's no twists or turns, you can tell exactly what's gonna happen. Even when I thought they were setting up cliche twists, it turns out to just be a farce and instead we get nothing. There's this part where Ratchet insists that he needs to take Clank to the Galactic Rangers. Secretly, it's because he wants to try join them, but he tells Clank they're his close friends. The Rangers are actually my, uh, friends. 
This seems like it'd be setting up for that cliched liar reveal trope. Like later in the movie, probably during some intense action sequence, the truth is revealed and we have that whole you lied to me moment. But instead, this happens in the very next scene. Yeah, like they'd know who we are. But you said they were your friends. What? What was the point in setting that up if you weren't going to do anything with it? Then there's this part at the end where Clank is trying to pull up one of their teleporter thingies out of the ground and Ratchet says, What are you doing? Then Clank goes, Improvising. Am I missing something here? Was there ever a part of this movie where they said that? Ratchet does the DreamWorks face like, Oh yeah, I recognize that callback. But I genuinely don't remember if that was in the movie before now. But a generic predictable story isn't the end of the world. I think the thing that brings this movie down the most are the characters. See, the cool thing about Ratchet and Clank is that it was created in a time where mascot platformers were sort of on their way out. So to have that while still keeping up with modern trends, it's a grungy, dark. Well, I want to say edgy, but that word sort of has negative connotations with it. But my point is, Ratchet was like this jaded, wisecracking Lombax who only looked out for himself. <laughs> Nerd. I like him. He was greedy, self-centered, and he wasn't afraid to be a douche to Clank. You know, he was a character. But in this movie, he's a wide-eyed, cuddly, cute creature who wants to be a hero and help people because he's super nice. Then he meets this little defenseless robot and basically takes on a caretaker role with him. I don't know why they took this approach. Did they assume the kids today couldn't relate to an annoying, greedy guy that just wants to get what he wants? Because that's exactly what a kid is. I would talk more about his character, but I feel like this comparison really betrays what I'm getting at. We'll sell Ratchet action figures, Ratchet sports shoes, Ratchet deodorant, Ratchet breakfast cereal, earmuffs and cologne, soft drinks, hard drinks, energy drinks, breath mints. <laughs> you get record deals, movie rights, reality shows, video games, and commercials, 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 commercials. <laughs> and then, and then, no deal, Vox. Hey, you think they'll name a street after me? Or a cologne! Earmuffs and cologne! Or a cologne! And that's not to mention Clank. No, really, he doesn't do anything in this film. He's got no personality and he and Ratchet barely interact. You know, for a movie called Ratchet and Clank, they really have no chemistry whatsoever. They're just forced to be around each other. Same goes for the Galactic Rangers, none of them really do anything worthwhile. The only thing I remember about them is that one of them was voiced by Bella Thorne of Alvin and the Chipmunks fame. But what if she didn't duck? She clearly needed a second to comprehend what Ratchet meant, yet he shot at her anyway. What if she didn't duck? This movie was animated by Rainmaker, known for such classics as Reboot and Tony Hawk's Boom Boom Sabotage. No, stop, that's not my thing. Yeah, so this movie looks like complete and utter sh shit. Doesn't look very good. For basing the series around flying to varied and unique planets, we really don't see many cool locations or alien designs. It's either generic purple townies or generic red blarg. The lighting is so bland. Again, for supposedly having all these unique settings, it all just looks the same. It's so boring. It's too bad because the character animation is pretty good for the most part. I just wish the backgrounds had some more effort put into them. You know, you're making a movie. Give it some scope. Now, the one thing I can get down with are all these Sony references. Whoa, there's the PlayStation 1 jingle. Oh my god, is that the Ratchet 3 UI? Whoa, is that Daxter and Sly Cooper? I recognize those things. This makes the movie good now. In all seriousness, these are the only highlights of the film. Well, on this joke. Wow, look at that. This is literally the only time I felt something other than complete and utter boredom while watching this. That joke is a complete outlier. This movie is so unfunny. Just because your movie takes place in a futuristic setting doesn't mean you have to keep going on about the hashtags and the modern trends and the... Wilhelm! <laughs> Did you get it? It's because they used the Wilhelm scream. But, but, but this guy was also called Wilhelm. Do you get it? Please. Please tell me you get it. This is all I have. Well... Sony did such an amazing job on their first PlayStation original that it cancelled all other projects, with the only other announced one of the time being the Sly Cooper movie, which has been stuck in development hell ever since. With it now supposedly being a TV series animated by the folks who did Sonic Boom, but we haven't heard much about it in a while. It really is a shame. The original Ratchet and Clank game had a great story, a great setting, a really well integrated consumerist message, and most importantly great likeable characters that grew and evolved into the heroes we know today, but ultimately yet failed due to trying way too hard to appeal to our modern trends and culture. Maybe one day Sony will try their hands at another PlayStation movie, but until then... Oh, oh 
that was terrible. Yes, yes it was.